Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our fourth edition of F FBC Pastors Talk. I'm Pastor Jared, and we welcome everyone back who's joined us for previous episodes. And if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. We hope you find this uh, series of video chats uh, helpful as we continue under this uh, title of Our God. And for the first several episodes of this, uh, this series, we've looked at the title of Our God and how God is so sovereign over uh, many things of life and on the earth in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, whether it's the day-to-day -day things we interact with, whether it's the seasons of life, or really the big and small events uh, that might come our way, that God is sovereign over all those things. There is purpose, and we can redeem those things and glorify him in uh, every aspect of life. Uh, where today we're going to look at a question that I think at least is a natural outflow um, of that study in Ecclesiastes, which is, why is there evil in the world in the first place? Uh, in, in the book of Ecclesiastes, we looked at how uh, God uses uh, things that are evil or difficult in our lives and uses them for his good and our, our, our good and for his glory. But why is there evil in the first place? And here to help us uh, talk through that question and answer that question uh, today is Josh Branch. Uh, for those of you who've been uh, watching the previous episodes, you know that Josh is our tech guy here at Faith Bible Church. Uh, but Josh's real job um, is he is the director of television at uh, Plain Local Schools, the television coordinator there, and he teaches uh, uh, the video classes as well at uh, Glen Oak High School. Uh, but Josh uh, is also a regular teacher here at Faith Bible Church in our adult classes. Uh, his uh, wife, Kim, and their four boys attend our church as well, and they're a blessing to our body in many ways. And, uh, they led our uh, college and career ministry for over eight years. And Josh has really chewed over a number of theological topics over the, the years, including this one. And so we look forward to seeing what, uh, uh, what Josh has to say and directing us to the Word of God regarding the question um, of evil. And also joining us again, like in previous episodes, is Pastor Mike, um, as I'm sure he'll have some things along the way that are helpful to say, and I'll be chiming, chiming in here along the way as well in response to Josh. So Josh, I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, whenever we talk about these things, we need to define our terms first. That's helpful. So what is evil? Yeah, so really uh, evil is defined in uh, negation to good. So uh, if you want to think of what's good, evil is really the opposite of that. It's the lack of good. It's the absence of good. It's in that negative view. It's, um, it's not a specific entity, although we know that there are absolutely workers of evil. Um, we know there's lots of examples of evil in Scripture, but really when we're talking of evil, we're talking about a lack of conformity, a lack of obedience, uh, you know, what, what the scriptures call lawlessness. So Justin, here you talk through that. So is evil, is there just one kind of evil then? Yeah. So, um, theologians and, and philosophers over the years have really determined there are two different types of evil. There's a moral evil and a natural evil. And the easiest way to think about these is moral evil is something that man does uh, usually to man, right? It's murder, it's lying, it's uh, terrorism attacks and adultery and, and rape, it's war, it's uh, all of the evil in the world that is, uh, you know, conducted by man himself. Natural evil, on the other hand, are things that uh, occur in the world due to original sin, due to us living in a fallen world, like hurricanes and earthquakes and uh, even sickness, death and cancer. And of course, on all, top of all of our minds right now, uh, the coronavirus would be a fantastic example of natural evil. Yeah, I think that, that last one you mentioned clearly uh, would be top of mind, uh, something that we're all dealing with. And we see that resulting in so much heartache and death and, and despair around the world. And so, yeah, a logical question is, um, where did that come from and why is it here? And so, yeah, I, I appreciate how you broke that, that down, Josh. Uh, and, and, I, and it's interesting how when you talk about the, it's, it's the uh, negation of good. Um, and when you start talking about things like moral um, categories, uh, you start to talk about um, things that, that really, when I think through it, it's only something that religion or even Christianity uh, can handle. Uh, so, Josh, is it true that when you start talking about evil, does that pose 
pose a problem for other religions or an atheist per se, or is it something distinct about Christianity and the Bible that allows us to address this subject? Yeah, I think that's a really, really good question, Jared. Um, I would say that that other religions certainly have an idea of evil, right? I think if you walked up to anyone on the street, uh, regardless of their religious background or, or even lack of religion in terms of a, an atheist or perhaps even an agnostic, they would have an idea of evil. They would be able to explain it. Uh, but what sets Christianity apart is our idea of absolute. So we know that there is uh, an absolute truth uh, in regards to the Bible and scripture and God's ways. And as a result of that, there's an easy correlation to absolute evil. Um, Good, absolute good is conforming to the things of God, and then absolute evil would be, you know, not conforming to those things. But yeah, Josh, that, that's really interesting. And I, I think another thing that is interesting or distinct about the Christian worldview is that we have this ability to embrace both, yes, the evil, but also the remaining good that is clearly there in creation. Yes, we've, we've had a true fall. Evil has entered. Things are not what they should be. But I, th- I think as we talk through this more, we'll see that we are distinct and that we can still recognize and acknowledge that the good creator still has good shining through in his creation. Um, and the creation itself is not evil uh, because that is, that is the extreme that some other religions go as well, where it's basically all matter is evil inherently. Anything other than God himself is inherently evil. And so there's nothing good about it. And so therefore everything that takes place is evil. The only good thing is knowledge and the purity of God and those things. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Christianity is unique, I think, in the way that it can go about addressing both the, the bad and, and the good in a way that corresponds to reality and that we all know um, is there. And Mike, is there anything you would add to that? Yeah, thanks, Jared. I mean, that that's a lot to consider um, and, and, you know, something that obviously we've wrestled through as Christians for so long. But I, I think when you look at you know, the difference between the product itself that God made, Genesis 1, versus then what man did with it. I mean, you see that all the way back in Genesis 3, right? I mean, don't eat from the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it's then the response, the, the, the ownership of Adam that he then, he sins, right? And evil, the and evil intentions of his heart makes that decision. Um, but it wasn't the product in and of itself, if that makes sense. Uh, and so you see that with a lot of things. Now I realize there are, um, certain camps of the Judeo Christian worldview that would say these products are evil in and of themselves. And these are good. And and what happens with that every time? So then you get in, in the almighty works game, right? So like, if I just weigh out the good, and chase after these good in and of themselves things and stay away from these evil, what they define as evil in and of themselves. In the end, it'll work out. Um, But we all know that, that our intentions as man is sinful, right? And is evil. And so it's, it's what we've done with those things. God created those things as what good we've turned them as evil. So uh, to bring us back to some theological terms, I would, uh, you know, say we're, we're talking about depravity, right? And, uh, you know, our belief as, as good Calvinists is that man is totally depraved. And what that means is that every part of man's being, uh, his body, his, his mind, his soul, is, is touched by sin. There's no recess in the corner of my mind that is not touched by sin. But at the same time, like you said, Jared, I'm not as evil as I can be. And, and that right there is just evidence of common grace that, that, that God gives to humanity, that humans are not as evil as they can be. Their acts aren't always evil. Um, now I believe that when you get into motivations and things like that, you can, you know, make an argument for that. But in terms of just interacting with your fellow man, um, there's a lot that can be redeemed and, and, and it is good in the world, uh, because of the grace of God. And so I think what, what's happened even in our conversation so far is we've really danced around, uh, the reality of what the Bible tells us in terms of something happened, right? 
uh, this is not the way that it initially was. Something happened at a point in time where something changed, evil entered in. And I think we should go in that direction because Josh and Mike, even though um, as uh, those who have a morality that is based on what the Bible tells us, God's word, Christianity, um, and we are able to talk in categories of evil, that doesn't solve the ultimate problem, right? Because uh, someone might try to throw back at us based on who we claim our God is as um, a sovereign good God. Um, what a conundrum or supposed problem, or it, I admit it is a bit of a, of a tricky theological navigation we do need to navigate as believers. What what is that uh, cause for us, Josh, this idea that there is evil, and yet we believe in the God of the Bible? Yeah, so you're referring to, to just the question of evil itself, and this is one of those grenades uh, that the atheists love to just lob right at Christianity. And um, younger or less mature questions may not have a good answer for this, so I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, the question... Uh, or, or this line of thought kind of goes something like this. If God is good, then he would rid evil from the world. If God is all powerful, then he would eliminate evil from the world, overcome it and take care of it. And last, evil exists, therefore, God is not good, or he is not powerful, or there is no God. And that's, that's kind of the gist of that, the, the gist of that where uh, an atheist or, or a, a, another, you know, type of, uh, of, of philosopher is trying to really hit the legs out from underneath Christians. Yeah, and, and even believers, I think we would be tempted to even uh, wrestle with that question, right? Especially when those very difficult things do come that are a result of the natural evil, especially, or... Um, even if someone does something evil to us <laughs> and we can't understand uh, why that would take place or we're just overwhelmed by the immense evil of it or even seeing evil remaining evil in our own lives. Uh, so it's, it's a, it is a real serious question. It's one that does uh, need to be wrestled through. And I'm thankful that as we do walk through uh, the biblical narrative in the account, we see uh, that there's a, that not only do we acknowledge there is evil because anyone can look and say, yeah, there's evil if you have any kind of moral framework. But I think we are unique in that we have explanations of why um, and the fact that uh, we can still maintain that God is both good and sovereign. And so I want to talk through that for a moment. Yeah, I mean, even asking the question, though, if evil exists, then why, you know, why is it that God, if he's all powerful, doesn't overcome those or doesn't rid those. Well, just saying if evil exists, you're saying that there's a definition of evil, correct? I mean, if, if you just even say that, so then you're saying that there is something outside of yourself that is determining what is right and what is wrong. Is that, is that a, a fair statement? Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, you have to have some basis by which you can define evil or even say something's evil. I mean, because otherwise we're all just coming up with our own definitions, which people try to do today. But I think, um, yeah, even the, the fact that there can be an objective evil means that there has to be something outside of us that defines that. Yeah, there's some form of morality there that you're measuring evil against. That's another assurance or affirmation for us as Christians that we have something that we go to that gives clarity <laughs> on what is defined as good and what is defined as evil. Mm. So if you, cause if you don't have that, how do you even define that? Mm. Right? I mean, every person can come up with their own good and their own evil based on their own moral positioning, if you want to say. Mm. And it is interesting how the, the word of God tell, like comes at it from different angles of how we even can know that there's evil. I mean, even the conscience that God has <laughs> given each person that, uh, we know when, when we've been wronged, we know uh, when, when we've been violated through, through stealing or someone lying or uh, harming us or murdering somebody. We know there's just something about it a, about that, that we know that that is wrong and that's our conscience. And then yet you have all these societies that um, have these laws that are in common over and over again that, that seem to be there um, 
regardless of, of, of their background and so forth. And so it does, it, all of those things point to the fact that there is some overarching um, definition of what good and bad is at a basic level. And just back to the, the question itself, it's a reasonable question, right? That is something that um, it's good to think through. It's good to have an answer for. And, and as you both have stated, thankfully, we believe in a God who has given us specific divine revelation to give us the answers to these. And that's one of the things that absolutely um, I love about Christianity. There's an answer for, you know, every question, whether we have that answer or not is, you know, sometimes funny uh, because there are definitely some, some questions I have that, you know, I haven't had the answer for, but in terms of the big ones in life, there, there are answers to that. We understand that our worldview is holistic in the sense that it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate that so much about our Bible as well is that we don't have to run from the big questions. Like we, we may not be able to reconcile in our minds how they can exist at the same time, or how it ultimately happens in God's providence and sovereignty, but yet it, there is an explanation, and it doesn't. Co it corresponds to reality. It corresponds to what we what we know and see in life, um, and it does. Um, and the the beauty is that God ultimately provides a solution too, <laughs> as well, which um, is what's great about our God and our our Bible too. It does bring up Ecclesiastes, where you know in some of those texts where he talks about even the evil that man's doing. He, he doesn't even realize that what he's doing, which is actually being transferred to others for their good, you know? And so it's just fascinating how God is using the very evil intentions of man's hearts and he's doing it for others good. And, and that's why at the end of the book, he says, it, you know, all these things are going on and it's like, we can't kind of, as Josh is saying, we can't always figure out all those things, right? That looks like evil. And yet th there's also at the same time justice going on. And I don't know how all that works together. And so just then as our personal relationship with the Lord, our response is what all the way at the end of the book, fear God and keep his commandments, right? For this is the duty. So it, we have to remember too, that we, we're not going to be able to figure out all of these things and how they all intertwine going to what you were saying, Jared, like you don't always understand how all those things coexist at the same time, but we do know this. We know one evil exists, but we also know too, God is over evil and he is over all of that so that we don't have to fear even the evil itself. And that as believers should be a, a great encouragement to us. Yeah. I mean, would I rather have a God like the God of the Bible, which again, doesn't tell us to ignore it, to sweep it under the rug, explain evil away, um, embraces the reality of it and all of its ugliness uh, that, we, that we know is there. It doesn't, it doesn't tell us to shut our eyes to it in terms of just ignore it, but it, it tells us it's there. Um, but yet it also tells us that, like you said, God is sovereign over it. And as we'll talk about in a little bit, quote unquote, allows it. Wouldn't you much rather have um, a, a worldview that has that, but then also, and then also communicate the solution for it? Um, even though it may pose a problem for us that we can't reconcile in our minds, how can you have a sovereign God who is good, um, but yet you have evil existing? And so um, it doesn't mean we can't be clear about it. Um, it just means sometimes we just don't have the ultimate answers as to why. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I would much rather have a, the situation we have, which is it embraces the reality of it. Um, and calls it what it is, and, and yet um, provides a solution uh, for it. So guys, with, with the way this conversation is going, we're, we just talk so much about how Christianity is so compatible with the reality of evil. And, um, and we're going to talk, we're going to come back around to explaining the origins and how it fits in with God and so forth. But it, it just, it just struck me that um, all this talk about evil um, isn't there always a real present opportunity for us to take a conversation someplace when evil comes up, Josh? Yeah, if you, if you want to talk about an open door, you know, once you have this idea of, of the, the question of evil with the, the moral evil and the natural evil, I mean, think about your interactions in your daily life. You, you talk about this type of stuff all the time with your friends and family and coworkers and neighbors and, and whoever, especially right now during the COVID-19 crisis. I mean, you want an open door, here it is. So 
I think the important thing that, that we need to understand as Christians is these are really good questions that real people have. They're not just, um, you know, armchair theologian, uh, ivory tower academic type theological questions. These are, these are the, the things that, that people think about when they're trying to go to sleep. These are the questions that, that people cry over. And we want to make sure that we have reasonable compassionate answers to them um, that, you know, just isn't it's something, um, you know, off the cuff and, 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 you know, uncouth. We want to make sure we're, we're answering people's questions with the hope that we have within us, which is Jesus. So you want to talk about an open door. We're running to Jesus every chance we get here, right? I can't answer all of these questions. Uh, I can't tell you why this specific thing happened, but I can give you the theological framework for why evil exists, for why sin exists, and I can tell you who's the hero of the story, who took care of it all. And, uh, and so we're going to discuss these types of things in later episodes uh, in this, this series on evil. And uh, Mike, I'm sure you have some, uh, some stuff you want to say to this. These are hard things for those who don't have a theological frame, because it's frustrating when you see that something's wrong, not only out there, but something's wrong here. And as you, you're like trying to fix it, you know, you're trying to do this or do that and try and make things make sense and not only make them make sense, but, but that they would go well. And, um, you know, so then when you can jump to that, um, we're all in need, we, all of us, you and I, we need something outside of ourselves because if we really analyze ourselves and really look at ourselves just individually, we have evil intentions. I mean, even when we do good things, how many times is there an intention behind it that we want to pat on the back or we want to be recognized or we want some sort of, you know, look at me, by the way, that was my phone that just dropped, but that was just some sort of look at me mentality. And, um, you know, so then you, you, you know, you run to certain passages like Romans three or Romans six you know, there's none righteous, no, not one. In other words, there is no one who can have a right standing with this God of the universe by themselves. There's no one who understands. We don't understand all of this. We know it exists, and yet we don't understand all of it. And so then it's, well, the God who is over it, uh, the God who is more powerful, all powerful, is the very God who sends himself, which is in Jesus. And so then in Jesus, he takes on that sin and he gives us a right standing with him by faith. And so then you run to Romans 8 and it's, there is therefore no, now no condemnation in Christ. And so once we're in Christ, we can have a relationship with God, not in spite of evil, but because he actually took on evil and he conquered evil. And so then that faith in him doing it then gives us rest in Christ and frees us. It doesn't mean we're going to figure it all out, uh, but there's so much peace there that when we understand that God did it for us on our behalf, that uh, I know allows me to sleep easier at night. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Amen. And uh, you know, we're not too far away from the Easter season and, and we know that uh, as Jared preached, uh, many years ago on the importance of Jesus's resurrection and how that was the supreme act of conquering evil, of conquering death, of conquering hell, and of, of, of purchasing our sins. And so in that, we trust. Uh, and then we can go further on in Romans 8, you know, to verse uh, 28, that now all things are working together for our good as Christians. We can't say that as a non-believer. Uh, and even when, when we encounter natural evil, even when we encounter moral evil, um, we don't know how that's working together for our good necessarily, um, but we can trust in the Lord who is the creator and ordainer of all things. You know, real quick, if I can jump back in here. I, it's so important to say that that verse 28 is pertaining to Christians. Because it's not, it's not working together for non-Christians good. It's actually storing up wrath uh, that on that day uh, will be used against them. And only by God's grace 
is that wrath already taken on at the cross. So it's not that our evil wasn't taken care of. Non-Christians and Christians, evil is taken care of. It's just ours was taken care of at the cross. Theirs was is going to be taken care of in eternity, uh, which is just heart-wrenching or gut-wrenching. Thanks, guys, for those insights. I mean, it is uh, it is good to know that even if at that moment we don't have all the ultimate answers, we can always go to the gospel. Um, but secondly, we can always go back and say, hey, let me look into it and come back more. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, we didn't get to the, the, the ultimate conundrum, which is if God is truly sovereign and he is good, then why didn't he stop evil? Or maybe he wasn't able to stop evil. Well, next time we're going to start and lead off with that question and start tackling that uh, from the book of Genesis and seeing uh, where it takes us. Thanks for joining us. For more information about Faith Bible Church or about the eternal life and forgiveness of sins that only Jesus can offer, please visit our website at faithcanton.com or contact Pastor Jared or Mike at jared at faithcanton.com and mike at faithcanton.com. Also, we invite you to connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash faithbiblecanton or via YouTube at youtube.com backslash faithbiblechurch. You can also check us out on the web at faithcanton.com. From all of us at Faith Bible Church, goodbye and hope to see you next time. Thank you.